All right. I'm going to walk through by way of reminder where we've been, and then we're going to have some time to share. Um, and usually we, we share in the after party time and people kind of trickle on out, but we're going to, we're going to have some time to share even before we uh, get to our after party, before we sing, uh, before we wrap up. So new normal church renewal in pandemic. Let's see here. Okay. So last week we read this passage. This is my commandment. This is uh, Jesus' words to his circle of friends. Uh, they didn't know yet that they had become his circle of friends. Uh, they were viewing themselves as his servants up to this point. So this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So we've been, the kids were talking about this morning. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. And of course, Christ on the cross has demonstrated the greatest act of friendship to all of us, and uh, his death and resurrection is what our friendship with him and our uh, reservoir of relational depth we have to offer one another comes from. It says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. So fruit is born out of abiding in the vine and in the context of relationships, friendships, the circle of friendships. It's, it's interesting that the friendships in that upper room um, are who Jesus chose to build his church through. So Jesus' church, in a way, you can view it as an ever-expanding circle of friendships, growing deep roots and bearing more and more fruit. And then he says, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. So by way of reminder, last week I talked about uh, four key components of kingdom friendships. Constancy, uh, carefulness, and as I heard Liam Brubeck talk about the intentionality with which he, had, he approaches his friends, he was talking about carefulness, full of care in relationship to your friends, compassion, sympathy, these types of things, but also candor. Uh, I think uh, Alicia's story was that she, she was sharing that she's great at admonishment, which is the candor side, but needs to smile a little bit more. Perhaps that's the carefulness side as, as a mother and that those key relationships. And then kingdom mindedness. So affinity based uh, friendships are great. You know, friendships built around kayaking or golfing or, you know, watching the Lakers or uh, any number of affinity-based groups. Those are great starting points, and, and it kind of represents friendship in that friends are people side by side, and they discover they have a shared interest, and they look at each other and say, oh, you too. Wow, this is great. But uh, what, what the biblical uh, idea of depth of relationship that we're created for is our, our affinity is based on something much larger than that. In fact, it's, it's the kingdom of God is the true and ultimate affinity that unites the tie that binds uh, depth of relationship. All right, so that's by way of reminder. Well, I have added a fifth C, so hopefully you can, re or I've added a fourth C, and I've changed a K to a C, so don't worry about that, just trying to get these categories in your mind. So, as I've thought about this, um, really, any quality relationship, including friendship, on the outset takes great courage. Um, so I was thinking this week specifically about asking individuals to give friendship testimonies, but then I realized how difficult it is and how vulnerable it is to speak uh, on the issue of friendship and our great desire for friendship. So I was thinking, why, is it, why does it feel like such a vulnerable spot to, to share a positive about a positive friendship or about pain and friendship. And then I realized that um, there is so much hurt and disappointment, uh, unmet expectations, unrealized depth of relationship out there. There is a lot of hurt and pain relationship to friendships that could be and, and maybe didn't happen or, or that did happen, but then there was backstabbing or whatever. And so I think that makes it very difficult. But also when things are going really, really well in a relationship, sometimes it's hard to share that publicly or with your faith community because it highlights a positive and then it also exposes the lack of friendships or lack of depth of friendships that could be 
So I get it that, that this is a, is a tough topic. Uh, the stats bear that out. Um, I think personal experience, and conversation with you all bear that out. So our insecurities are there, either immediately on the surface or somewhere deep down that we can't even quite put our finger on and probably need, you know, to work through some of our, our soul issues with. Uh, even this week, I was in a meeting amongst some dear friends who are on a kingdom focused team together. One of the men was sharing with tears the pain of rejection in friendship that is stinging even right now. So I, I felt uh, compelled to add courage to our list of components that go into kingdom friendships. Courage to initiate on the front end. It, it always takes someone to take that bold step of initiation and to risk the, the possibility of rejection. And then courage to be vulnerable in the midst of a relationship, like a, a good friendship. And then courage to have candor Courage to have uh, uh, grit to bring the things up that need to be brought up. So, so I add courage to our list of constancy, carefulness, candor. And because the, the fifth one being a K, kingdom mindedness, just wasn't sitting great, I swapped it out for a synonymous phrase, Christ centeredness. So now all of you who uh, were struggling with the three C's and one K, now we've got five C's, courage, constancy, carefulness, candor, Christ-centeredness, which is, is in a, it really synonymous with kingdom-centeredness because the kingdom is all about the king and his uh, aspirations, his, um, what his priorities are for his people, which are always for their good. So Christ-centeredness. And so as we think about our friendships, these, this is a good rubric for us to, to, to even walk through. Am I demonstrating courage? Uh, am I being a constant friend who is through thick and thin? Am I being careful, intentional in the way I approach my friends? Am I um, bringing candor or candidness or rebuke, admonishment, speaking the truth in love when I need to? And is our friendship, is it, has it just become a closed-in click? Or is it actually Christ-centered and, and, and modeled after Christ's sacrificial love that the world is a better place because of my friendship? Because I am, uh, we in our friendship are exuding the love of Christ and drawing others out and drawing others in into relationship. Okay, so King to Friendships. Now, we'll get real practical and... Um, if you, as we go through here, I would just say, feel free to, to utilize the chat and then we'll have time to unmute here in a second. So as we get practical towards kingdom friendships, you know, most of this stuff just applies to any relationship. Alicia did a great job talking about uh, the relationship of her and to her kids, but it's the same type of thing in a friendship. And I just want uh, to say by way of reminder and I'm going to blast the uh, chat with a, a super overwhelming um, little uh, nugget of information here. But a reminder that there's a reason that there's almost 60 one another's in the New Testament. Worthwhile relationships are simultaneously extremely important and extremely difficult. So they, they have to be wrapped in these, uh, these, rela these uh, relational ex exhortations, the one another. So... Here's this overwhelming uh, thing I just blasted on the chat, highlighting 40 or so of the one another's. <clears throat> All right. I've talked some about this, but a, a very practical step is conversations that linger, exchanging entertainment time for lingering conversation. Um, if there's time later, there's some quotes in uh, Ajith Fernando's Reclaiming Friendship, Relating to Each Other in a Frenzied World. And one of the biggest things that I took from this book and from his, his writing is that um, we have got to carve out time for conversations that are not bookended um, just by quick starts, quick stops. We have to carve out time and, and have margin in life for conversations that linger. And this applies to any relationship, spouse, with kids, friendship. And so some of this came out even in our, our mingle time. We pick activities where conversation can happen. So like going to the movie and watching a movie together for two and a half hours, maybe that's an icebreaker for a group of guys that struggle to go deep. 
but walking with one another where you're forced to conversation, man, that can be a really good and uh, safe way uh, to get together even during COVID-19. Kayaking together, uh, fire pitting came up, jogging together. Um, I've had more people just stop by my house during this season where there have been some conversations that linger than ever before. So um, a, a friend of mine, another pastor in town, Lewis Smith, pastor of First Free Methodist, um, he stops by all the time and then, then I have to make a decision. Am I going to let this conversation with my brother and friend, Lewis Smith, eat into my schedule or am I going to say, hey guy, or hey brother, I got, I got stuff to do. Um, so this is a value that I think we need to come back to, prioritize, work on, um, cultivate, and, and carve out. So more could be said there, but conversations that linger. Technology that deepens. Welcome to the 21st century, where we are Zooming for our, church, our main church gathering this week. So given in-person, face-to-face is ideal, but can't always be had, then we have to look for technologies that come as close as possible to the ideal. And uh, we talked about it last week, but the Apostle Paul had technology at his disposal called letter writing. And so we have that same technology, and it's making a comeback. Some of you are excited about that. I've been writing more letters, cards uh, recently than I, than I have for a long time. But we have some amazing technologies that, I get it, technology can be used for great evil, um, as we understand from the, the porn industry that in many ways drives technological development. But technology can be used for great good as well. Zoom, uh, if you use these, and I can't see everyone because I'm sharing my um, PowerPoint, but raise your hand if you use these technologies. Zoom, FaceTime, you connect with certain people and certain technologies because not everyone will ad adopt the, the same exact technology. Marco Polo, anyone use that? Man, I'm telling you, Marco Polo might be a great way for, for us busy folks to deepen those relationships because it's essentially a, uh, a video texting app so you can get to it when you want. And it's actually the uh, technology that we're using for our Pure Desire group, which I alluded to last week. Uh, growing in depth of friendship there. Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, especially for all those overseas. It's super encrypted. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah, and Skype. Anyone remember Skype? Poor Skype. Skype had a 17-year head start, got left in the dust by Zoom in two weeks. So maybe not Skype as much. So I would encourage you, prayerfully even engage with technology that deepens friendships. This one's important, proactive planning. Yes, we all want that friendship that just spontaneously happens. We want that in our marriages as well and with our kids as well. But the reality is there is a lot in our world that is going to try to undermine depth of relationship, and it requires proactive planning. So we've got to proactively plan when we will connect with those who we want to cultivate friendship with. And I'd say spontaneity actually will spring then from proactivity. One example for, for me uh, Paxson Lemoyne, uh, most all y'all should know Paxson, a uh, core member of our church, but he's my longest standing friendship in our church. We go way back. Right now we're trying to find our friend's versary so that we can celebrate 15 years of friendship uh, next summer, I believe, or, or coming up pretty soon. But the thing is we have to work at, we have to plan when we're going to connect, when we're going to stay consistent. So we walk together every other week at Washington Marlatt Memorial Park. We have to put it in our calendar. And then out of that planning, then the spontaneity of being in the same neighborhood, just popping by, those things can happen. I think proactive planning is very important. And then I'll throw on here, practical step for you uh, in any of our relationships, but as we're talking about friendship, friends, we have to identify and address the enemies of friendship in our culture, in our society, in our world. And they are many. There are many enemies of friendship. I, I'll list the, the ones that came to my mind, and maybe you have some that I'm missing, and we need to identify these. Um, busyness and competing schedules. Sometimes it's just so hard to get our schedules on the same page. Um, I talk with or hear of, um, you know, 
stay-at-home moms, working moms, and the schedules are just not aligning, or maybe there's no margin. So busyness and competing schedules is a huge enemy, I think, of friendship. Undervaluing friendship. Uh, we talked some about this last week. Um, you know, in the list of all the things you're going to give time to in a week, is friendship actually built into your allotment of priority or of time? So I think there's an undervaluing of friendship that occurs. Insecurities, we already talked about that. Man, to be vulnerable with, with another uh, is very difficult. And then literally, I think the enemy, Satan himself, is an enemy to, to depth of friendship. Uh, the enemy is very content with us to fritter away our time on Netflix, to fritter away our time scrolling on Facebook and adding more and more so-called friends. But when there's actual conversations that linger around Christ-centered things, moving to action, the, the enemy himself is not about that. So, a few questions, and then, then I'll open it up uh, just to hear from you all. This is mostly a review from last week, but you may consider, you know, what is your next step in friendship with Jesus? And maybe you have not established that friendship with Christ and you need to, for the first time, put your faith in Christ and his finished death and resurrection and, and begin that relationship. Or maybe you've, you've put Jesus, that friendship, on the back burner and you actually need to be proactive in planning how you will invest in that friendship. I promise you that Jesus is ready, willing, and desiring to deepen his friendship with you. What area of friendship do you need to grow in most of these five? Courage, constancy, carefulness, candor, Christ-centeredness. Specific step maybe you can take this today, this week, this summer, maybe even following up on what some people shared earlier today as a beginning point, going golfing with Ron perhaps. Um, Something that maybe that would help spur one another on, much of which we've already done. What new ways of cultivating friendship have you discovered in this season? And then finally, a, a very vulnerable uh, couple questions here. What pain in friendship do you need to grieve? And we all have pain in friendship that still warrants uh, grief and recognition of the, the pain and hurt. And then what joy in friendship do you need to express gratitude for? So maybe a specific step is to tell a friend how important they are to you and give thanks to God and to your friend. And then so by doing, uh, you would deepen that, that friendship. All right. So we've got uh, 10 minutes or so really to uh, discuss, share questions, comments, anything that was unclear, anything you want to ask about. I think Lily has a comment or a question and, um, Maybe Anthony's checking if, if she really does, but if, if you want to, you're welcome to unmute Lily and have her share. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my PowerPoint and um, pop these questions in the, in the side here so that we can all see one another. All right. Who would like to share in response to any of these questions or ask a question? Um, I'll share I'll, a quick story. Mm, mm, mm. Whoever's talking, go, hope, go, go. Hope, oh. go, and then Amber. <laughs> okay, uh, I just have like a comment, a long comment, but when you started the friendship series, so like last week, I was uh, kind of like reunited with like my friends, like in a deep level, which was kind of cool because it was Friday, and Saturday that we all hung out and Sunday when Sunday arrived you we were talking about friendship and I just thought that was really cool and it just like what we were talking about what related what you were saying so I found that pretty cool and me personally like I'm a social butterfly so wherever I go I make friends but the hard part is I'm like always on the go and I have to like leave those friendships. Um, so as I got older, I like started like um, having like 
strong feelings for the people I have friendships for because I like I just love making friends and just the other day uh, one of my first best friends and she lives in South Africa and she just followed me on Instagram mm -hmm. and it was like the most exciting thing because we haven't spoken to each other in years and we just caught up and I was talking about um, how we're talking talking about friend friendship at church and she was like we're kind of doing that too like it was just really cool seeing that and like how like the timing was like perfect and yeah so I'm really glad that you're talking about this and as me like I'm growing up and realizing what friendship is and like how deep it goes mm -hmm. so I find that pretty cool awesome so my thanks Hope yeah. Thanks so much. I think you you mentioned a very specific practical step, which is to warm up an old friendship. I think I've thought the last couple of weeks about all the friends who've come and gone that with a little initiative and courage, I could revisit that friendship. Like you said, your friend in South Africa. And yeah. it also highlights the use of technology to deepen friendships in a globalized world. And, and, and that's amazing. So thanks so much, Hope, for sharing. Amber, did you want to go next? Uh, yeah, I'll make it quick. <laughs> Lols. Um, I have been blessed to have lots of great friends, um, but I, late, recently I've been thinking about a really um, pivotal friendship for me. Um, Jen, if you remember when Benji and Kenzie were babies and you're pregnant with Sam and Jen and I, so I, if, for those of you that don't know, I had a foster baby that lived with me for five months. Her name's Kenzie. Um, so she's around the same age as Summer. Hamburg. They're like five days apart. Anyway, so during that time, Jen and I would like on a weekly basis go on long, long walks and then the babies would play. And it was such a pivotal time for me because it was a hard time. Like I was a brand new mom, kind of like this weird kind of mom. And Jen just was like, in it with me. She, we would talk about anything and everything. And she wasn't like, well, let me give you all this advice because I'm a season mom. She's like, well, let's just be together and let's let the babies be together. And I know that that like that intentionality and the kind of like spontaneity and um, just being together time was so huge for me um, as a, you know, as a new mom and a working mom and just trying to figure out all that. And I, when I think back on that time, it's just so much joy and so much peace that I had um, knowing that she was there and, um, and knowing how rich our time was. And so, uh, yeah, and now I'm going to cry. Shocker, I know. But so all those things that you said, then like, I just said, man, yeah, Jen did that. Jen did that. <laughs> like that was, a, that was a part of our friendship. It was intentional, but it was fun, but it was Christ-centered and just mm -hmm. really a rich time. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Way to be a friend, Jen. <clears throat> yeah. I'll, uh, I'll share um, uh, briefly. So mine would be, the, I'll share with the, the, the sorrow in friendship. One of the, the, it seems like that the older I get, the harder it is to have those affinity based friendships that seem to happen so naturally in high school and college. And uh, it, especially living in a place like Manhattan, as you know, most of, if all of, not all of you guys know, it's, the folks come and go and most folks tend to go after, you know, two, three years and, uh, friendship, um, especially the non-affinity based friendships, the friendships we're talking about, they take work, they take initiative. And I, I have experienced the sorrow and even maybe the, the gun shyness, the exhaustion uh, of pouring into friends over the years and life group and discipling relationships. And they're sweet for a time and then they move and yeah, we can still stay connected, but usually it's not the same. And I think I, I have to, keep battling to keep uh to keep a friendship mentality living in this town and yet i feel like re in recent years the lord is kind of just telling me that your desire dave is good and it may not be fully realized this side of heaven sometimes it will be but it's worth it and at, at the end of the day it will be fulfilled so i that's that's yeah that's what i connect with is is the the manhattan exhaustion perhaps Thanks for sharing that, Dave. Yeah, as a church, um, 
uh, we are choosing to battle for a me mentality of to invest in relationships, even if people are here for a short time and leaving. And we understand that's a relational cost. I've shed many tears over that. That's what we want. We want to be a church that uh, will, is willing to risk that pain because of the value that can come from that kingdom value. And, you know, we got a lot of friends around the globe. I mean, that are connected to our church. Who else would like to share? Someone is feeling that nudge. Someone's hey, feeling it. Can I talk? Can you yes. hear me? Yeah. Okay, I switched my, my uh, volume for a second. Um, I was actually kind of been reflecting a lot lately on um, the beauty that a lot of my near and dear friends are actually my sister-in-laws. So they don't, first of all, they don't have much choice. <laughs> Like, I know they have choice, but like, you know, so there's this weird dynamic with family friendships where you do feel safe because they're a forever person, but then they can get kind of, you know, they can get really messy really fast because they are a forever person. Um, but anyway, I just been thinking and was really just reflecting on and kind of been reflecting on you and Maris and what you guys have done in friendship for me is intercede for me and cast vision for my life. And, um, and I guess that goes into the candor. Is that what that would be in under? And so like really, um, interceding for me in prayer and casting vision and kind of speaking into my life in a very beautiful way that just things that I would have, Oh, sorry. It was calling me. Hey, stop. Um, in a way that I, I just would have not just things that I would have not seen on the horizon. And so um, just a shout out to Maris that it's been like a couple of decades now that <laughs> it's like a long time to be, you know, in someone's life and not be their family. It's like so great. I mean, you're my family now, but, um, but yeah, interceding and, and prayer and um, casting vision for friends of the Holy spirit is just, it's been incredibly powerful. And I feel fortunate that, you know, you're also my family, but, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. <clears throat> yeah. Highlighting prayer. You can be a friend who prays and you can uh, work out some of that candor in, between you and God about your friend. And, and I like the idea of vision casting is part of candor, uh, but it's sort of the positive side. I need to grow personally in friendships in expressing my desire and vision for friends rather than disappointment or frustration. I think so. I'm, I'm needing to learn it on that as well. Uh, does someone else, one more person want to share uh, before we sing together? And of course we have after party time to share. continue to share. Friendship can also be uh, in teamwork that uh, you can have friends in common and, and unify around uh, individuals. So you can do this as a, as a group, not just individually. So let's do that as well. Yeah, that's great. Uh, that's great. You know, those bands of brothers or, you know, um, sisterhood of the whatever. Someone mentioned that last week, traveling something, pants, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, circles of friends. I, that's really good. You know, Bill, you, you highlight we're an American. We are Americans, most of us here. And we do tend towards that individualistic mentality and, and thinking in, in terms of groups of three, five, six, um, and those, those bands of friendships. I love that. That's good. Is anyone else just sitting on a comment you want to share right now before we, we sing together? I can share. Um, um, I would say I have a hard time um, in the gray. And what I mean by that is I like for things to be black and white. And so if there's a friend I haven't connected with for a long time, I don't have a lot of confidence or I feel really awkward reaching out to them because I feel like that time and space where we haven't really spoken, um, like can create tension, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, so I know that's something I need to grow in is feeling comfortable, like reaching out, um, and not feeling like, Oh no, we haven't talked in like a month or however long. Does that mean yeah. we're not as good friends anymore? If that makes sense. Cause I think friendships a lot of times are in the gray and they're not always black and white and there can be different yeah. levels of friendships. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for putting words to that. Requires courage to, to initiate or reinitiate and risk uh, even rejection. So I love the conversation and we'll, we can continue in the after party, but uh, 
Emily's going to lead um, Waymaker. Um, so Emily has about a mo another month with us via Zoom, and her church in Wichita is going to be meeting in person. So uh, taking advantage of her being able to lead us. Um, as I thought about the song Waymaker, though, I thought of the challenge of friendship and how for many of us, you know, we need God to gift us friendship. We need that gift. That's consistent with how he's worked through history. I thought of Aaron and Moses, their relationship, how God gave Aaron to Moses. Uh, Jonathan was given to David as a friend. Uh, this is kind of a paramount friendship in the scriptures. And the role Timothy had in Paul's life as a friend, um, which highlights that you can be a close friend with those that you lead in ministry or are being led by in ministry. Timothy and Paul are examples. So as, as uh, Emily leads us, be thinking in terms of God providing the type of relationship uh, that we need um, through friendship. You got it? Never stop working, never stop, never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. Never 
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Our God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Our God, that is who you are. 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 It's who you are. You're the way maker. You're the miracle worker. You're the promise keeper, our God. That's who you are. You're the the way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, our God, that is who you are. Amen. Thank you. All right. We'll close our time together with an old, familiar, well, it's not even that old, the benediction. So Dave's going to take us home. All right. So uh, again, benediction means good words, good words of blessing. And uh, the words on this one uh, specifically uh, talk about my friends, may you grow in grace. My friends, may you grow. And so uh, I, I'd encourage you to, to, if you're on a computer, go ahead and uh, flip over to the gallery view so you can see everybody. And uh, I would encourage you to, uh, to pray this blessing even maybe more intentionally than you would have over these people, whether they're your friends uh, in, in heart right now or not, these can be your friends. And uh, God has put us together in a family. And so uh, this can be vision casting as well as a blessing. My friends, may you grow in grace, in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Now and forever, now and forever, amen. And to God be the glory, now and forever, now and forever, amen. One more time, my friends. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace knowledge of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 All right. This teaching was recorded at Tallgrass Community Church. Because God first loved us, we exist to love God and love our neighbors. For more resources like this, visit tallgrass.church.